Well, Italian industrial production numbers unexpectedly falling in December, and the French industrial production numbers also down a little bit more than expected yesterday. David Costa is the dean of the Robert Kennedy College and joins us now from Zurich. And also, we still have our guest host with us, Mito Potecha from Credit Agricole. David, always a pleasure to speak with you. When I spoke to Mito before, he said that the calm in the markets is quite deceiving. Would you agree? Well, I would say yes. In a way, uh, we didn't see so much volatility besides a few days. So we have uh, essentially markets which want to go higher and don't want to go much too much lower. But I think it's justified by the fact that in Europe we're having a lot of reforms, a lot of things improving at the moment. And so uh, there is no really no way to invest other than perhaps in the European markets. And uh, as a rule, we still have equities as the place to be in this year 2014. So that's why not having too many alternatives, that's one of the reasons why markets will, I think, remain positive, especially if we have some good news like we had now, this forecast from the UK coming through and helping the market to maintain the, the current momentum. Uh, David, you sent us through a couple notes on the banking stress test. My big question to you is, we've had two rounds of stress tests. The third one, is it going to restore credibility within the Eurozone banking sector? I think so, because this new regulator has actually made clear that there will be no compromise in a way, and banks have either to provide, pass the test, which have to, to, to ensure credibility, or they will have to fail. And that is something which uh, natural regulators will not be in the same position to do. And uh, I, from the comments of the chair, which recently been released, I think that this will be the time where this new institution is aware that they need to, to ensure to have a certain credibility and have one big chance to have this credibility. So inevitably, there will be some failures. We hope it's not got too many failures, but there has to be more rigor. And already from the criteria that they released, it seems to be much more rigor than the previous test, where they had uh, uh, indeed some credibility issues. David, I just had a question. Obviously, there's been a lot of focus on the OMT, open market uh, operations from the ECB, and the decision by the German Constitutional Court to, to defer that to the European Court of Justice. Do you think that's going to cause some waves in, uh, until we get this uh, March 18th decision? Is that going to cause more nervousness in European markets? I don't think so, because generally European institutions will tend to side with the European Central Bank. And that's why, in a way, the court wanted to state their opinion. But at the same time, we had two dissents there which say that essentially the court was not competent to decide on that. So they, they essentially deferred that to Europe. And that's for the market, is, is certainly very positive, because European institutions will tend to side with the ECB. And, and I would be surprised to see anything in a different direction. So overall, that's been a very positive development to have this a commentary from the German court, but not a decision and this deferment to a European institution. David, hi, it's Adam in Singapore. Talking about uh, the bank stress test, um, you know, how, mu how much progress, progress pardon me, have the Europeans made in terms of getting to an agreement on finding a solution and breaking that loop between the sovereigns and uh, the banks? Well, there isn't a solution. If there isn't an easy solution, we have seen that the sovereign's uh, uh, holdings from banks has actually increased from the date of last December. And that's quite normal because there's still not much clarity about uh, this principle of the stress test, whether sovereigns will really care this uh, theoretical zero risk or how it's going to be weighted overall. So I think it's difficult to break this link. And in a way, we don't want to break this link, which can send, uh, uh, actually, uh, we, we can send that back uh, in problems into the sovereign market. So the link is there. They have to be reduced. There to be some good supervisory oversight, but at the same time, it's very difficult to break this link. However, the new regulators say that they do want to break this link. So it will be interesting to see what kind of measure they can put in place to ensure that we don't have too much holdings of sovereigns from the European banks. So it's interesting to see, but I don't see this uh, link to be broken up very quickly. And I wouldn't want to see that in the very, very short term. It has to be very coordinated and thought after. David, based on what we heard from the ECB last Thursday, it's pretty sanguine about money market rates. It's very sanguine about the threat of deflation. But clearly, one thing isn't working, and that's the transmission mechanism. Is the ECB too slow to address it, or is it simply incapable of doing anything about it? 
Well, transmission mechanism is fairly complicated because we have a situation where banks obviously benefit, not at the moment, European banks from a good carry trade profit. And it's very difficult to say, go out and land, especially when we are running the stress test, which on the other hand tells banks not to take on too much risk or to restructure the risk that they already have on their books. And some banks, let's not forget, are now already selling some of their position to uh, and hedge funds and private equities to really try to be prepared for this stress test. So it is a difficult situation. It will take time. But in a position, yes, the European Central Bank will have to address this sooner or later and get sure that if there is more stimulus, this stimulus will reach the economy and not just the banks, allowing them through the carry trade to have perhaps a recapitalization mm -hmm. and easy recapitalization of solving their problems. So it has to be a situation where the money are lent. To one big circle, David, thank you very much for leaving us with your thoughts there today. That was David Costa of Robert Kennedy College out of Zurich. And let's get our final thoughts.